and welcome to Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. In the spotlight tonight, Stephen Mays, a data analyst whose specialist subject is the periodic table. Samantha Campion, a train maintainer who will be answering questions on life on Mars. Cathy Scott, a commissioning editor whose subject is the Titanic. And David Workman, a youth and community director, his specialist subject, Barbara Castle. <laughs> Tonight's contenders, like all those who have gone before them, have been swatting up like mad on their specialist subjects, but they cannot swat up on the questions in the general knowledge round because they don't know what's coming. They either know the answers or they don't. They have two minutes of questions in the first round and then two and a half minutes on general knowledge. So let us ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is? Stephen Mays. Your occupation? Data analyst. And your chosen subject? Uh, the periodic table. The table of the chemical elements arranged in order of atomic number. Here we go. The creation of the modern periodic table is usually credited to a Siberian scientist who made his discoveries while he was writing a textbook. What was his name? Uh, Dmitry Mendeleev. Yes. The discovery of electricity enabled chemists to use electrolysis and isolate many new elements in the 19th century. Humphrey Davy discovered one element by the electrolysis of a lime and mercuric oxide mix. Which one? Calcium. Yep. A French geology professor developed a type of periodic table published in 1862 using the so-called telluric screw, which plotted atomic weights on the outside of a cylinder. What was his surname? Uh, de Chanc courtois Yes. In 1789, the French chemist Antoine Lavoisier published a list of 33 simple substances in groups, many of which, but not all, are modern-day elements. What did Lavoisier put at the top of the list? Uh, hydrogen. Lumière. The creation of the modern periodic table is often credited to Mendeleev, but a number of scientists made similar discoveries after discussion of atomic weights at an international conference in 1860. What was the name of that conference? Uh... The Russian Periodic Law Conference. Karlsruhe. Radioactivity was discovered at the end of the 19th century, and this enabled Pierre and Marie Curie to discover polonium and radium by experimenting on an ore of uranium. Which ore? Uh, pitch blend. Yes. Chemists have synthesised more than two dozen elements beyond uranium in the table. Some have been found to exist in very small amounts naturally, including two first made in 1940. One of these is plutonium. What's the other? Uh, Neptunium? Yep. Whose short letter in Nature magazine in 1911 entitled The Number of Possible Elements and Mendeleev's Cubic Periodic System is said to have anticipated the concept of the atomic number? Uh, Newlands. Vandenbroek. William Crookes identified thallium from a prominent green line in the spectrum of an old mineral sample, but a French scientist was originally awarded the discovery for producing the pure metal. What was his name? Uh, it was Lamy. Claude Auguste Lamy. No passes, Stephen. You've scored five points. And our next contender, please. And your name is? Samantha Campion. Your occupation? I'm a train maintainer. And your chosen subject? Life on Mars. Life on Mars, the drama series about a detective called Sam Tyler who woke up after a car accident to find himself in 1973. Here we go. When Sam Tyler meets his new boss for the first time and asks him who he is, he gets the reply, Gene Hunt, your DCI, and it's 1973, almost dinner time. I'm having... Hoops. Yes. What character, played by Rafaela Hutchinson and Harriet Rogers, materialises from Sam's television set at various times? When she first appears to him, she says, You don't like me with my clown. I can see I make you frown. The test card girl. Yep. What 1987 action film does Sam claim to quote from when he defines policing as serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law? Robocop. Yep. Sam enters the VIP lounge of the Warren nightclub and approaches a famous singer to tell him that he's a big fan and advises him to drive carefully, especially in minis. What's the name of the singer? Mark Bolan. Yep. What's the name of the horse that Sam draws in the office sweepstake for the 1973 Grand National in the race it falls at Beecher's Brook? Proud Percy. Yeah. In the first episode of the second series, Annie Cartwright picks up a casino chip with a pair of eyebrow tweezers. She says she got the idea from watching a particular television series. What one? 
casualty? Man in a suitcase. When he goes undercover to infiltrate a swingers party at a local tennis club, Sam introduces himself to the organisers, Roger and Carol Twilling, under an alias. What alias does he use? Tony Blair. Yes. An episode in series two begins with Sam as a stop-motion figure created by Hot Animation in the style of a character from the opening sequence of a children's show first broadcast as part of Watch With Mother in January 1966. What show? Camberwick Green. Yep. Who was the only female writer on Life on Mars? She wrote the Series 2 episode in which D.S. Ray Carling is injured in an explosion, as well as several episodes of the spin-off series Ashes to Ashes. S.J. Clarkson. Julie Rutterford. Sam, Jean and DC Chris Skelton chase a robbery suspect along a canal path in their swimming trunks to the accompaniment of a theme song from a James Bond film. Which song? Live and Let Die. Yep. The final two episodes of Series 2 features a character from Sea Division in Hyde who was intentionally named by the writer after an actor from the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz. What's the name of that character? Frank Morgan. Is correct. You had no passes, Samantha. You have nine points. Thank you very much. And our next contender now, please. And your name is? Cathy Scott. Your occupation? Commissioning editor. And your chosen subject? The Titanic. Which sank on her maiden voyage in 1912. Here we go. The Titanic was built for the White Star Line at the Harland and Wolf shipyards in Belfast between 1909 and 1911. And on its completion, it was the largest ship ever built with the tonnage that broke the record held by another White Star vessel. Which one? The Olympic. Yep. Until April 1st, 1912, when Captain Edward Smith of the Titanic sister ship, the Olympic, assumed command, the Titanic was captained by which man? Uh, Captain Haddock. Yes. Nine Harland and Wolfe employees, including the chief designer, Thomas Andrews, travelled on the Titanic's maiden voyage to check that everything was working correctly and to identify improvements that could be incorporated into the Britannic. This group was known by what name? The Guarantee Group. Yes. What was the name of the stoker who jumped ship at Queenstown? He's thought to have hidden among sacks of mail as they were transferred to shore. John Coffey. Yeah. At around 11.40pm on April the 14th, the lookout, Frederick Fleet, informed the bridge that there was an iceberg directly ahead of the Titanic. Before First Officer Murdoch told the engine room to reverse the engines, he first gave what order? Uh, harder port. Harder starboard. Leading fireman Barrett was below decks when he saw the iceberg pierce the hull and water pour in. What number boiler room was he in at the time? Six. Yes. A ship was visible in the distance from the Titanic as it sank. Although the ship's identity has been disputed, Ernest Gill testified that he'd seen the Titanic's distress flares from on board which ship? Californian. Yes. The wireless operator, Harold Bride, told the New York Times that after he left the wireless room for the last time, and later when he was in the water, he heard the band playing what piece of music? Uh, nearer my God to thee. Autumn. Which member of the crew dived into the sea as the ship sank and described the feeling of the water in his book Titanic and Other Ships as being like a thousand knives being driven into one's body? Charles Lightoller. Yes. What was the name of the last male survivor of the disaster who died in 2001? He was one of the so-called Titanic orphans, two brothers whose identity was initially a mystery because their father had booked their passage under an assumed name, Louis Hoffman, and died in the tragedy. Uh, Michelle Navratil. Yes. Of the many victims of the disaster, around 150 were buried in a city in Nova Scotia, Canada. Which city? Fairfax. Halifax. No passes, Cathy. You've scored eight points. Thank you. And our final contender, please. And your name is? David Workman. Your occupation? Youth and Community Director. And your chosen subject. Barbara Castle. A radical Labour politician. Many people thought she'd become Britain's first female Prime Minister. Here we go. Barbara Castle was born Barbara Ann Betts in Chesterfield in 1910. Her family moved two years later to a town in Yorkshire where she developed a lifelong love of licorice, the local confectionery. Which town? Pontefract. Yep. In 1937, she won a seat on a borough council in London, became one of its youngest members. Which council? St Pancras. Yep. Castle joined the Ministry of Food in 1941 and was put in a division which was responsible for sourcing a particular foodstuff from around the world. Which division? Fish. Yep. Castle's first speech to the Labour Party conference came in 1943 when she attacked senior members of the party for their slowness to embrace an important report on welfare. Jam yesterday and jam tomorrow, she said, but never jam today. Which report? The pass. 
A major success of Castle's political career was the 1970 Act of Parliament aimed at achieving balance between genders in the workplace. She was a guest of honour at its 30th anniversary celebration. Which Act? Equal Pay Act. Yes, in 1955, the Daily Mirror financed a fact-finding trip that enabled Castle to expose police brutality in Africa under British colonial rule. Which country did she visit? Kenya. Yep. After the 1959 general election campaign, Castle unsuccessfully sued a Conservative politician for libel after he claimed that she'd accused British soldiers in Cyprus of torture. Which politician was that? Christopher Chatterway. Yes. During her time as Secretary of State for Transport, Castle famously introduced the breathalyzer and compulsory seat belts in cars, and also gave the go-ahead for the construction of a major bridge in the north of England, which finally opened years later in 1981. Which bridge? The Humber Bridge. Yep. When Castle became Secretary of State for Employment in 1968, she retained a Birmingham MP as her parliamentary secretary, even though he was known to be a supporter of her cabinet rival, Roy Jenkins. He always loyally carried out my policy, even when he disagreed with it, she later wrote. What's his name? Roy Hattersley. Yes. What was the name of the rambling old cottage in the Chilterns that Castle bought with her husband, Ted, in the 1960s? It remained her home till she died in 2002. Hell Corner Farm. Is correct. Your only pass, Barbara Castle was cross because a report on welfare had not been implemented swiftly enough and it was the beverage report. You've scored, David, nine points. Some good scoring there. That's the end of the specialist round. Let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place with five points, Stephen. Third place with eight points, Cathy. Joint first place, nine points apiece, Samantha and... David, so now it is the general knowledge round. But if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, there has to be a tie break. So let's ask Stephen to join us again, please. And Stephen, you start out with five points. You have two and a half minutes of general knowledge now. Lots of time to catch up and overtake the field. Here we go. What's the name for a bicycle with two seats, one behind the other, and two sets of pedals on the same frame? Uh, pass. The town of Ambleside and the villages of Grasmere and Coniston are in which English national park? Uh, the Lake District. Yes. Which French footballer was sent off in the 2006 World Cup final after a headbutt on the Italian player Marco Materazzi? Uh, Zinedine Zidane. Yep. The DAX stock market index is based on companies that are traded on the stock exchange in which German city? Uh, Frankfurt. Yes. Which Irish boy band topped the UK albums chart for the eighth time with their 2019 release entitled Spectrum? Uh, U2. Westlife. A 20th century Welsh textile designer noted for her Victorian style clothes and home furnishings was sometimes referred to as the Earth Mother of the Alternative Society. What was her name? Uh, Evans. Laura Ashley, a triangular skyscraper in Manhattan designed by the architect Daniel Burnham and completed in 1902, has a name that refers to its supposed resemblance to a domestic appliance. What name? The Chrysler Building. A flat iron building. The discus thrower and Athena and Marcias were works by an ancient Athenian sculptor that were lost and are known only through marble copies made in Roman times. Which sculptor? Uh, Phidias. Myron. The adjective Shavian means relating to the works of an Irish dramatist and critic who won the 1925 Nobel Prize in Literature. What was his name? Sure. Yep. A variety of chocolate-flavoured sandwich biscuit with a fondant filling was first produced in 1910 under the name Criola, but is now known by a name that shared with a French royal dynasty. What name? Uh, Bourbons. Sorry, say again. Uh, Bourbons. Yes. Which Second World War German field marshal was known as the Desert Fox because of his successes on the battlefields of North Africa? Uh, Rommel. Yep. What's the first name of the barrister Rumpole of the Bailey, created for television by John Mortimer? Uh, John. Horace, what verb from the medieval French for hatch means to sink a ship deliberately, often by opening watertight doors or using explosives? Uh, capsize. Scuttle. In 2014, the former Prime Minister of Norway, Jens Stoltenberg, was appointed as Secretary General of which military alliance? Uh, the UN. NATO. What's the name of the hard-bitten New York detective created by the crime novelist Mickey Spillane? In a 1980s television series, he's played by Stacey Keach. Uh, Williams. Mike Hammer. Which seaport on the Gulf of Guinea is the capital city of Ghana? Uh, Accra. Yeah. What 1993 film stars Sir Anthony Hopkins as the Oxford academic and author C.S. Lewis and Deborah Winger as his wife, the American poet Joy Gresham? Uh... 
Oh, no, it's not. That's ah. Silence of the Lambs. Don't worry, I will tell you, it is Shadowlands. And your other pass, <laughs> that name for the bike with two seats... Tandem. It's a tandem. <laughs> your brain just went, didn't it? It's yeah, funny. absolutely. However, Stephen, you have 12 points. Thank you. And now, Cathy again, please. And you start out with eight points, Cathy. Let's see how you do with your general knowledge. Two and a half minutes, here we go. A drake is a male of what bird? Duck. Yep, a unit used in astronomy to measure vast distances in space is often abbreviated to the letters L, Y. What do they stand for? Light years. Yep, three-day eventing is an equestrian sport which includes show jumping, cross country and one other discipline. What is it? Dressage? Yep. What term for someone who's unfairly blamed for the misfortunes or wrongdoings of others comes from the biblical custom of casting out an animal into the wilderness laden with the sins of the people? A scapegoat. Yeah. What's the rhyming name of the short pear-shaped stringed instrument which dates back to medieval times and on which the notes are sounded by a wheel turned by a handle? Uh, a mandolin. Hurdy-gurdy. Which British author won the 1996 Booker Prize for his novel Last Orders? He also wrote the critically acclaimed novel Waterland. Uh, John Grisham. Graham Swift. What's the word for someone who favours a form of government that has a president as head of state instead of a monarch? It's also the name of one of the main political parties in America. Uh, Republican. Yep. In 480 BC, the Greek commander Leonidas and 300 of his elite troops were killed at the Battle of Thermopylae, fighting an invading Persian army. Leonidas was the king of which city-state? Sparta. Yep. Which actress plays the lead role of Martha Costello QC in the legal drama series Silk? Uh, pass. What French word for a particular colour is used in English as the name for a cosmetic powder used to add colour to the cheeks? Uh, blush. Rouge. The Woodstock of the mind is how Bill Clinton described the annual literary festival held in a small market town in Wales. Which town? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? The Woodstock of the mind is how Bill Clinton described the annual literary festival held in a small market town in Wales. Which town? Anglesey. Hey, what's the term for an earthquake or a series of minor tremors that often follows a major earthquake in the same area but is of a lesser magnitude? Uh, pass. The ancient Egyptian goddess Sekhmet is usually depicted with the body of a woman and the head of a female wild animal. What animal? Uh... Eagle. Lioness. Each one of a pair of sensory organs of the human body contains a system of cavities and ducts known as the labyrinth. Which organs? Ears. Yeah. The story of four young American men who, in the mid-1950s, formed a singing quartet called the Four Seasons is the basis for a stage musical that became an international hit. What's its title? Jersey Boys. Yeah. The SI unit of electrical current is named after a French scientist. What's the name of the unit? Uh, Jules. The Ampere. You had um, two passes. The um, term for the minor earthquake after minor tremor after an earthquake is the aftershock. And the actress who played uh, Martha Costello was Maxine Peake. Cathy, you now have a total of 16 points. Thank you. And now, Samantha, again, please. And, Samantha, you start out with nine points. The score to beat is, at the moment, 16. Here we go. In the British Honours System, the VC is a medal awarded for valour in the face of the enemy. What do the letters VC stand for? Victoria Cross. Yep, the term expat for a person who lives abroad is short for what word? Expa expatron. Expatriate. A 2003 film stars Bill Murray as an actor who meets a college graduate played by Scarlett Johansson while he's in Tokyo to shoot an advert for whiskey. What is the title of the film? Lost in Translation. Yes. Which British aviation engineer and RAF pilot invented the jet engine? He received his first patent in 1930. Sir Frank Whittle. Yes. In the television sitcom Gavin and Stacey, Stacey and her friends and relatives live in a seaside resort in the Vale of Glamorgan. What's it called? Barry. Yep. A French term used in English to describe top quality cooking in the traditional French style translates as high cookery. What term? Cotton Bleu. Haute cuisine. Which British electronic dance music duo consists of the brothers Philip and Paul Hartnell? Their UK hit albums in the 1990s include Snivelization and The Middle of Nowhere. Daft Punk. Orbital. Luzon is the largest island of which Southeast Asian country? 
Indonesia. The Philippines. A late 19th century artwork of a dog named Nipper, painted by Francis Barrault, was originally entitled Dog Looking At and Listening to a Phonograph, and was later adapted to form the logo of a major music retailer. What's the better known title of the painting? HMV. His master's voice. Edward Burrow, John Neville, King Henry VIII, and Thomas Seymour were the four husbands of a 16th century English noblewoman. What was her name? Anne Boleyn. Catherine Parr. What word derived from the Norwegian for sloping track appears in the name of several Olympic skiing events in which competitors are required to zigzag between artificial obstacles? Slalom. Yeah. Which 19th century Russian composer wrote the opera Prince Igor? It was unfinished at the time of his death and was completed by Rimsky-Korsakov and Glazunov. Bise? Borodin. What word for a type of female spirit in Greek mythology also refers to the immature forms of certain insects such as dragonflies and grasshoppers? Nymph. Yes. At the end of an epic poem by John Milton, first published in 1667, the archangel Michael tells Adam of the eventual coming of the Messiah and leads Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. Which poem? Blessed Land. Paradise Lost. In 1990, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, John Major, introduced a tax-exempt saving account that was a forerunner of the ISA. It was known by what acronym? Pass. Well, I can tell you because we're out of time. The Tessa. <laughs> and uh, that was your only pass. You have scored 15 points. Thank you very much. And finally, David again, please. And uh, you start out with nine points. David, the score to beat. It remains at 16 if you want to get through to the semi finals. So here we go. A Labradoodle is a cross between a Labrador and which other dog breed? Poodle. Yep. What metric unit of area is equal to 10,000 square metres? Acre. Hectare. Trust yourself, you know more than you think you do. They're the opening words of a best-selling 1946 book by which American paediatrician? His work urged parents to trust their instincts and to show their child warmth and understanding. Dr Spock. Yep. In 2020, a previous Oscar winner was nominated in the Best Supporting Actor category for his role as Mr Rogers in the film A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood. Which actor? Tom Hanks. Yeah. What's the name of the military academy near Camberley in southern England, where recruits to the British Army undergo officer training? Its motto is, serve to lead. Sandhurst. Yeah. What's the word for a ring-shaped group of coral islands that surround a lagoon? The word was first applied to the Maldive in the Indian Ocean. Atoll. Yeah. The songs Being Alive and You Could Drive a Person Crazy are from a Broadway musical written by Stephen Sondheim. Which musical? Company? Yep. Which Middle Eastern country was ruled by Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi before his overthrow in a revolution in 1979? Iran. Yep. A stainless steel sculpture known as the Scallop unveiled on the beach at Aldborough in Suffolk in 2003 and dedicated to the composer Benjamin Britten is the work of a local artist. What's her name? Becky Hamling. Yep. David and Victoria Beckham's older son shares his name with the borough of New York City. Which borough? Brooklyn. Yeah. In the children's animated television series Pingu, the title character is a flightless bird. What bird? Penguin. Yeah. Which former athlete who won 11 gold medals across five Paralympic Games was made a dame in 2005 and a peer in 2010? Tanny Gray Thompson. Yeah. The rivers, the Shore, the Barrow and the Nore, known collectively as the Three Sisters, converge near a city in southeast Ireland and flow into its harbour. Which city? Cork. Waterford. The savoury paste, known as Gentleman's Relish, was created by John Osborne in 1828. What small salted fish is its main ingredient? Pilchard. No, anchovy. In the Christian calendar, Holy Week is the seven-day period that leads up to which festival? Easter. Yep. The art of creating and arranging steps and movements for dance sequences is known by a name that comes from Greek words that mean to dance and to write. What name? Choreography. Yep. Which writer, considered one of the greatest Russian poets, was fatally injured by a French cavalry officer in a duel fought just outside St. Petersburg in 1837? He was only 37 at the time. Dostoevsky. Pushkin. In the armies of ancient Rome, ten cohorts of soldiers were combined to form what military unit? Centurion. Legion. You had no passes, David. You now have a total of 22 points. Well, a clear winner. Let's have a look at the final scores. In fourth place, with 12 points, Stephen. Third place, 15 points, Samantha. Second place, 16 points, Cathy. First place, with 22 points, David.
which means that he goes through to the semi-finals. Congratulations to him. And if you would like to be a contender in the next series, do go to our website, bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind, and you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. And do join us again next time for more Masterminds. And thanks for watching. Goodbye. First time in that chair, it feels kind of surreal because I've seen it so many times on television over the years. And you sit in it and you think, this is it now, I can't go back. And your name is? David Workman. There was a point in general where I, I got a few in a row and that gives you a bit of a boost because you feel, oh, I, I, I know something. I'm getting some of these right. And it feels really exciting. Which musical? Company. Yep. Well, I applied for Mastermind because uh, it's one of the great quiz shows on TV. I'm a big fan of quizzing, playing it with friends in the pub. And so it felt like it'd be a great show to be part of. If you're looking to apply to Mastermind, I'd say go for it. There's absolutely nothing to lose. And if you choose something that you're passionate about, a topic that you're, that you're interested in, you're going to do really well. Which country did she visit? Kenya. Yep. It's a chance to kind of show off your knowledge and your interests to the, to the world. 16 points. Thank you. At one point, Cathy took the lead, then the nerves really kick in because you go, well, now I've, I know what I've got to get, what I've got to beat. David again, please. Can I reach that? You know, the questions don't fall my way, and it's curtains. So that kind of gives you a bit of a push to, to go for it and uh, not just say pass. I got 22, which is incredible. Um, for, uh, I never get that at home. So it's kind of, it's, um, it's, it's more than I could have hoped for. I was, I was hoping not, not to come last. So to, to win is kind of just a cherry on the cake. First place with 22 points. David. So it feels surreal, still, still sinking in.